One day after the first memorial for George Floyd, the city of Minneapolis has agreed with Minnesota officials to ban all chokeholds by police. Negotiators have also agreed to require police to report and intervene anytime they see any unauthorized use of force by another officer. Four former Minneapolis police officers have been charged in Floyd's death, which took place on May 25th. Northampton is set to host another demonstration tomorrow protesting the murder of George Floyd. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Western Mass News at 6. I'm Jordan Jagelinzer. This will be the second demonstration in the city this week. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us live with more on how the city is preparing. Audrey? During the last demonstration, Northampton's police chief took a knee with the protesters, sharing in their outrage over what happened to George Floyd. Now, on Saturday's protest, the one coming up this Saturday, Chief Casper says with the growing amount of tension and outrage in the country, she will have extra police backup at the scene. The protest Monday was different than protests that we've had in Northampton before. Northampton Police Chief Jody Casper says the demonstration earlier this week yielded some damage to their station. However, in preparing for the upcoming demonstration on Saturday, she tells Western Mass News she has not requested help from the National Guard. We have a lot of mutual aid partners that we can reach out to in short order. I mean, whether it's a, an event like this or even a, an event that Maybe the city gets really busy, we have a lot of calls, we can easily call our mutual aid partners. Saturday's protest will take place in front of the Northampton Police Department, and the social media event page currently has 1,500 people marked as attending. An organizer on the page has called for the event to remain peaceful. Casper says she understands their outrage over the murder of George Floyd. Mr. Floyd's death and just the history of systemic racism in our country, uh, we really want to work together with our community members to address those issues and, and you know, evolve a as a system. Amid calls for police departments across the country to review their use of force policies, Casper says she followed a list of eight criteria in looking at Northamptons. One that was missing, I, I think, from our use of force policy that probably should be added is direct guidance for an officer who might be witnessing excessive force and the duty to step in. Now, Chief Casper says that intervening in witnessing excessive use of force is outlined in a different part of the department's policy, but she says she feels it needs to be restated in the use of force policy text. And just at, as a reminder, the protest happening here in Northampton is happening on Saturday from 4 p.m. to 7. Live in Northampton, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. Audrey, thanks for that live report. Turning to Holyoke now, where changes are underway following a protest held there earlier this week. Today, the city's mayor and police chief announced new use of force policies for police officers, along with a civilian review committee. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis is live outside the Holyoke police station with the details. Leon? Jordan, this announcement comes after protesters marched from City Hall down here to the police station on Tuesday. A protest both the mayor and police chief took part in. Now, Western Mass News crews were out here as hundreds came together in solidarity to honor the memory of George Floyd and call for reforms in local police and practices. Holyoke Mayor Alex Morris and Police Chief Manny Febo responded with the, the announcement today that they have updated the police department's rules and regulations and are now creating a civilian review committee, one of the reforms protesters called for on Tuesday. They're going to have all eight can't wait campaign policies in place where officers will be trained to intervene when an officer is using excessive force without the fear of retaliation. I spoke with Alex I spoke with Mayor Alex Morse a short time ago about the city's decision to move so quickly on this. We need to hold each other accountable, uh, and we hope it never gets to the position where a fellow officer has to uh, intervene to stop another officer, uh, but it can happen in, in any city, and I think we need to do our part here in Holyoke and every community across our country to train our officers in use of force, uh, to train them in de-escalation, Information for Holyoke community members that are interested in serving on that civilian review committee will be on our website, westernmassnews.com. Live in Holyoke, Leon Purvis, 
Western Mass News. It is a tragic representation of so many acts of racial injustice that are long-standing and pervasive throughout our country. Workers at Mercy Medical Center in Springfield today taking a moment to reflect on the life of George Floyd. A group gathered at the Green for prayer and a moment of silence to honor Floyd and all the people who have suffered injustice at the hands of others. Turning our attention now to the coronavirus pandemic, let's take a look at today's latest headlines as news of the country's unemployment rate drops. Some Western Mass businesses say they're bringing workers back. Officials also releasing the latest numbers surrounding COVID-19 cases here in the Bay State. We'll have more on that in just a bit. And local restaurants are gearing up as they look towards outdoor dining, potentially opening as soon as Monday. New data released today, the May unemployment rate has fallen since April amid worries the new number would be higher than it was during the Great Depression. The decline is attributed to a surge in jobs as the nation begins to reopen. Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Kane is live in Springfield with more. Lindsay? Jordan, I spoke with two local business owners who say they are bringing more employees back on board as they plan for reopening. The May unemployment rate dropped to 13.3 percent from 14.7 percent in April. The U.S. economy also gaining 2.5 million jobs last month, the largest monthly recorded gain. As more businesses begin to operate or are preparing to open their doors again, some employees in Western Mass are being added back on the payroll. We've been shut down for about eight weeks now and today we began service to all major cities in the northeast limited service in the beginning but as passenger activity increases we'll be adding schedules and departures almost daily peter picknelly chairman of peter pan bus lines tells western mass news over the phone that 100 employees have been brought back to work for friday's reopening maintenance drivers, some ticket folks, customer service, and some office staff. So we're still about 20% back, but we're looking forward to getting full steam ahead and full capacity soon. He says while services are limited right now, they are prepared to bring back more staff as the demand increases. If we see schedules that are filling up, we just add more schedules and we'll bring on more drivers. Many of our schedules today are at limited service, three quarters full, and everybody seems to be happy to be getting to their destinations or visiting friends and family, so we're looking forward to it. Over in Agawam, owner of Cooper's, Kate Gord, tells Western Mass News over the phone that she is bringing back several employees for their anticipated reopening date next week as part of the state's phase two reopening plan but she isn't able to bring back everyone all at once. In addition to myself, I would have two on per day and I'll alternate them. They're all part-time and we'll just take it from there. You know, generally I don't have all hands on deck unless we're in the middle of the Christmas season. She says for now, it's a waiting game to see how customers respond. We're going to have to see what business dictates. Don't really know what to expect as we reopen. Hoping that we'll be as busy as we can possibly be, but still be safe. Governor Baker is expected to announce the official phase two reopening date at some point tomorrow, but is aiming for a June 8th start. Live in Springfield, Lindsay Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsay, thanks. And as you just heard, a reminder that tomorrow Governor Baker will be making his announcement regarding phase two of the state's reopening plan. We'll have that for you live on our free streaming Western Mass News app. The Department of Public Health reporting 420 confirmed cases of the coronavirus today and 74 probable cases, bringing the statewide total to 102,557. The state confirming 35 more people have died from the coronavirus today. No new probable deaths, bringing the statewide death toll to 7,235. For more coverage on the coronavirus emergency as it develops, you can log on to our free streaming Western Mass News app. We started out the day with mostly cloudy skies. Now we're starting to see the clouds breaking and the sunshine very abundant into this evening. A couple of raindrops possible as you go into Franklin County. The heaviest of the rain entering into the Berkshires right now. We've been tracking this 
cell for about three hours now as it was to the northwest of Albany, now tracking uh, just to the north of Interstate 90, about to cross into Pittsfield. Very weak uh, as it stands right now, but we'll see if it does tap into some of the blue skies and the atmospheric heating and instability that arose with some of the sunshine that we saw. You almost see the haze on the horizon too. That's just how muggy it has been throughout the day today. Highs reaching into the mid to low 80s. Our dew points still pretty muggy, mid to upper 60s. So it feels like the upper 80s out there for our heat indices. Tonight, staying on the upper, staying in the mid to upper 60s with a chance for a shower and a storm. Full look at the forecast, Jordan, coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you.